Well, for writer-director Jim Capobianco, the world is a very animated place. The Academy Award nominee takes us on another imaginative adventure into the brilliant life of Leonardo da Vinci. We chatted with him about the film. But before we get into the adventure, I want to take you back to Ratatouille. Now, pardon the pun, but you were kind of cooking from scratch on this one. Now, in the inventor, you're dealing with real people. How did that affect the process? Well, yes, you know, in developing the film, it, you can get bogged down in all the details of a person's life. So I really needed to pick a period of Leonardo da Vinci's life that was, um, you know, smaller. So I decided to um, focus on the last three years of his life um, and that I was able to limit the amount of storytelling because that's the material you're given is this person's life. So where will you start? And, um, you know, so I really had to focus in on who he was and, and take the information from Leonardo da Vinci life. You know, it, it is a dramatiz dramatization uh -huh. of his life. So you need to, um, you know, bring that out in a way that is entertaining and, and fun and everything as well. So, you, you know, the details can get bogged down with all the history and everything, but as a storyteller, you have to find the story within it. Long, long time ago, when long beards were all the rage, a rather insightful inventor put some big ideas center stage. Now, you just mentioned that it really focuses in on those last years of Leonardo da Vinci. What do you think you learned from him that you were so intrigued about or that you found super interesting? Well, you know, the thing I found most interesting in studying about him was, and in developing the research for the film, was how real he was, you know, as a real person. You know, what he really you know, struggled through life in the sense of being, he procrastinated, he had to deal with bosses and he had trouble with his assistants and the people he worked with. And, you know, and I felt like these are real human um, things, you know, we all deal with. And so to me, that was what I really wanted to bring out in the film uh, and bring it to him, Leonardo, who's up on a pedestal as the ultimate genius, down to a level that we can go, Oh, wow, he's closer to me than I thought, in a sense, you know, he, he really did have troubles and, and doubted himself and everything like I do sometimes, you know, so yeah. th that's really where I wanted to, to go with it. This is the story of how I became the legendary Leonardo da Vinci. The Kings will be here in a fortnight. And I absolutely love when a film does that, that it's able to connect with anybody that watches it. And that is where you are so good, Jim. Now you use a stop motion and animation in this film. Why was that important to really be able to tell that story? Well, you know, it's a Leonardo da Vinci story. And I thought, well, drawn animation and stop motion animation are the two handcrafted forms of animation. Mm -hmm. and for a film about Leonardo da Vinci, that was important to me that we, tell it in that way you know drawn animation is akin to his sketches and his paintings and and, and all that and then the stop motion is engineered and built and made with real materials and and uh you know they have a metal armature inside of these puppets and skeleton so these to me felt very leonardo da vinci as well so even though it might be you know computer animation is the new technology or uh -huh. new wish <laughs> but um that it felt like these older forms really fit with uh leonardo Again, very well thought out. Now, I have a question for you because I think the character development is so big in these films, but and everybody has their own depiction of what these they should look like. How does that process come together? And I see those puppets behind you; they're great. Well, um, do you mean in the design of the puppets, mm -hmm. like how things get designed and everything? Yes, I, I'm just so curious about that. Well, some of it's taste, you know, I, I really, I grew up with the uh, stop motion films, the Rankin and Bass films, the Rudolph and the Red Nose Reindeer and, and those. And so in making this film, I really wanted to bring it into a world that was really approachable. 
uh, that had a great design sense. I'm really a big fan of simpler designs. So you design it in a way to reflect the characters. So um, you know, Leonardo has a structure that's like graphic and triangular, and he was actually into triangles. He thought they were the most powerful form, figure, uh, shape. And so to shape him in triangles was the right way. And so uh, Marguerite is similar. She has a triangular body. Um, and so, and she is, they're a kind of a pair. So, and they connect to each other. So you want to think in terms of character. It always comes out of character. Why can't you just be satisfied with painting pretty things? Oh, not this again. Cheer up, Maestro. We will help you. It's Jim Cabo Bianco, everyone. <laughs> the inventor. We can't wait to see it. Thank you so much, Jim. A true Number 15, pleasure. Thank you. So I set off to prove my point. Creating a city of ideas is so extraordinary. With friends along for the ride. On the road to fortune and fame. And an adventure full of pride. Ah, oh, shoot. This talk of science and discovery. Yahoo! Makes my stomach go all queasy wheezy. Even Michelangelo agrees. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. The Inventor is playing in theaters nationwide. You can learn more at theinventorfilm.com.